Okay, this will be part three. Um, this is going to be just a brief overview of why Ephesians chapter five from verses 22 to 33, when examining these scriptures in the King James Version Bible, fully agrees with the account Yohanan gave in Revelation 19, verse seven through nine, why these scriptures prove the bride, the lamb's wife is one Proverbs 31 woman. Um, you know, when you consider the original parable of the ten virgins, the way Matthew initially wrote them in Matthew 25, verse 1 through 13. Okay, so this is going to be a short but to the point study proving that Ephesians 5, 22 through 33, um, these scriptures, not in any other version, but in the King James Version Bible, um, these scriptures prove Yeshua's wife is one woman um, when examining Matthew 25, 1, according to Matthew's original Aramaic scriptures. I am addressing a comment many use when quoting in comment sections on video hosting sites um, when they reference Ephesians 5, 25 or Ephesians 5, 27, um, saying that this proves that the church is the bride. Um, no, actually, it's quite the opposite. Um, these scriptures prove that the bride really is one woman. When you read, you know, all of verses 22 through 33, okay? And so um, if you read the account Paul gave to the church at Ephesus in Ephesians 5, 22 through 33, it is a proven fact that Ephesians 5, 25, when comparing these scriptures to Ephesians 5, 33, it does prove the Lamb's wife is one woman when you use only the KJV Bible. And so I'm going to go through and read Ephesians 5, 22 through 33. Um, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband. So clearly, when you look at Ephesians 5.25, the church is referred to as an it, and the very last verse, verse 33, um, an actual wife of one husband is referred to as a she and a her. There's a clear distinction. In some modern Bible translations, the church is referred to not as an it, but in you know a feminine tense, and this is not accurate. Um, and so, yeah, the church... Um, really should not be referred to as a her. You know, in, in some of your translations, it is not labeled as an it. Um, and really, this is part of the great deception. Um, so we can see here very clearly, husbands love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it in Ephesians 5.25. And then an actual wife of one husband in verse 33 is referred to as a she and a her, okay? Very, 
you know, there, there's a clear distinction here, okay? And so we know that when we compare these scripture verses to Revelation 19, 7 through 9 in the King James Version Bible, um, it fully agrees with what Yohanan wrote in these scriptures. Um, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife, one wife, not wives and husbands, hath made herself ready, not themselves. And to her, not them, was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they, more than one person, which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of Elohim. Okay? And if you are wondering, I believe the bride is a hidden bride. Um, you know, I realize there's a lot of people that would disagree with me on this one. But really, even if Genesis 24 was written differently, um, it still wouldn't make any sense. It, it, it would still be, you know, in violation of Galatians 5, 19 through 21. You know, it's just going to stir up envy, hatred, and everything bad outlined in Galatians 5, 19 through 21, you know, with um, a million women claiming to be this woman online. It's just not... You know, it's not setting people free concerning this great deception, you know, um, claiming to be this woman. And so really, I do believe that Genesis 24, 61 through 67 proves that, you know, because Rebecca is a foreshadow, um, you know, when she initially met Isaac, you know, she wore a veil. Um, and this is definitely symbolic of the real bride knowing to remain hidden or veiled. And so I'm going to go through and read Genesis 24, 61 through 67 in the KJV Bible. And Rebekah arose and her damsels, and they rode upon camels and followed the man. And the servant, who is Eliezer, took Rebekah and went his way. And Isaac came from the way of the well Lahai Roy, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate meditate in the field at the eventide and he lifted up his eyes and saw and behold the camels were coming and Rebekah lifted up her eyes and when she saw Isaac she lighted off the camel for she had said unto the servant what man is this that walketh in the field to meet us and the servant Eliezer had said it is my master therefore she took a veil and covered herself and the servant told Isaac all things that he had done, and Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent, and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. So we know that Abraham is a type of Yahweh the father. Eliezer, the servant of Abraham, is a type of the royal Kakadesh. Isaac is a type and foreshadow of Yeshua the Messiah, and Rebekah is a type and foreshadow of the bride, the Lamb's wife. It's very clear, you know, uh, why this chapter was written the way it is. Um, so this proves that the hidden bride, the Lamb's wife, mentioned in Matthew 25, 1, according to Matthew's original Aramaic scriptures, is one hidden bride, one woman. The daughter of the king mentioned in Psalm 45, 13, um, the original parable of the ten virgins speaks of the same people, the same event outlined in Psalm 45. And so I'm going to go through and read Matthew 25 um, from the Aramaic Bible in plain English, um, the parable of the ten virgins. Then the kingdom of heaven will be compared to ten virgins. The same took their lamps and went to meet the groom and the bride. Uh, verse 2, but five of them were wise and five were foolish, and those fools took their lamps and did not take oil with them, but those wise ones took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But when the groom delayed, all of them grew tired and slept, and in the middle of the night there was an outcry, Behold, the groom has come, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. The fools said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, behold, our lamps have gone out. But the wise answered and said why there is not enough for us and for you go to those who sell and buy for yourselves and when they went to buy the groom came and those who were ready entered with him into the wedding place this is where the bride and the groom get married under the hoopah in the shamayim and the door was barred but afterward those other virgins came and they were saying our lord our lord open to us but he answered and said to them amen i say to you that i do not know you wake up therefore for you know neither the day nor the hour 
And so I'm going to read about um, Psalm 45, the wedding ceremony that will occur in the wedding place mentioned in Matthew 25, 10. Okay. My heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore God hath blessed thee forever. Gird thy sword upon thy thigh, O most mighty, with thy glory and thy majesty. And in thy majesty ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness, and thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Thine arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies, whereby the people fall under thee. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. King's daughters were among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen in gold of Ophir. Hearken, O daughter, and consider and incline thine ear. Forget also thine own people and thy father's house. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty, for he is thy lord, and worship thou him. And the daughter of Tyre shall be there with a gift. Even the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. The king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is of wrought gold. She shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework. The virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee. With gladness and rejoicing shall they be brought. They shall enter into the king's palace. Instead of thy fathers shall be thy children, whom thou mayest make princes in all the earth. I will make thy name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore shall the people praise thee forever and ever. To explain the account Paul gave in 2 Corinthians 11, 2 through 4, the chaste virgins who will be betrothed to one husband, which means Lord or Master, um, are in fact all joined in one body. But the body of Christ is many members with different functions. His wife, one woman, comes out of one part of the body of Christ, just as Eve is formed um, she was formed from one of Adam's ribs, um, and she is definitely a foreshadow. Yes, we are all going to be betrothed or joined to one husband or Lord, according to 2 Corinthians 11, 2 through 4, as chaste virgins, but not as husbands and wives, okay? The opposite of a chaste virgin would be a worker of iniquity outlined in Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Okay, because we know that if you're not on the narrow pathway, if you're on the wide pathway that leads to destruction, you're obviously not a chaste virgin. You know, you're a worker of iniquity. Okay, and so, you know, obviously um, when a pastor you know, claims that these scriptures proves that the, the body is the same as the lamb's wife. No, this is not accurate, and this does not line up with Matthew 9.15, Matthew 25.1, original Aramaic version, Mark 2.19, Luke 5.34, or John 3.29. And so I'm going to go through and prove that these scriptures, you know, they fully agree with what Yohanan wrote about the bride, the lamb's wife in Revelation 18, 23, Revelation 19, 7 and 8, Revelation 21, verse 9 through 11, and Revelation 22, 17. Um, clearly, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they will all be there during the wedding ceremony, um, you know, tucked away in um, Luke 12, 36 through 38, um, the Psalm 45 wedding ceremony. Matthew 9, 15, Aramaic Bible in plain English, and Yeshua said to them, how can the children Children of the bridal chamber fast as long as the groom is with them, but the days are coming when the groom will be taken from them, and then they will fast. Matthew 25, 1, Aramaic Bible in plain English. Then the kingdom of heaven will be compared to ten virgins. The same took their lamps and went to meet the groom and the bride. Mark 2, 19 through 20, Aramaic Bible in plain English. Yeshua said to them, Are the children of the bridal chamber able to fast as long as the groom is with them? No, but the days will come when the groom will be taken from them and then they will fast in those days. Luke 5, 34 to 35, Aramaic Bible in plain English. But he said to them, you cannot make the children of the bridal chamber fast as long as the groom is with them. 
but the days come when the groom will be taken from them and then they will fast in those days. John 3:29, Aramaic Bible in plain English. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and listens for him rejoices with great joy because of the voice of the bridegroom. Therefore, this my joy, behold, it is full. The reason why I am doing this is because I live in the United States and I believe the destructive mountain of Jeremiah 51, 25 is in fact Yellowstone and that this super volcano will erupt when Iran fulfills Isaiah 13, 17 through 19 judgments, which are also outlined in Revelation 18. Jeremiah 51, 25, King James Version. Behold, I am against the O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroyest all the earth. And I will stretch out mine hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks and will make thee a burnt mountain. Um, Revelation 18, 1 through 10, King James Version. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she is rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she hath filled fill to her double how much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously so much torment and sorrow give her for she saith in her heart i sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow therefore shall her plagues come in one day death and mourning and famine and she shall be utterly burned with fire for strong is the lord god strong is adonai elohim who judgeth her and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall be wail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning standing afar off for the fear of her torment saying alas alas that great city babylon that mighty city for in one hour is thy judgment come and so we know that this will take place right when medo persia iran fulfills isaiah 13 17 through 19 which makes clear behold i will stir up the meads against them which shall not regard silver and as for gold they shall not delight in it their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb their eyes shall not spare children and babylon the glory of kingdoms the beauty of the Chaldees excellency shall be as when elohim overthrew sodom and gomorrah i hope this message blesses you and i hope um, that it sets people free indeed in line with john 16 13 and john 8 32 and john 8 36 the spirit and the bride will soon shout out come when the apocalypse the unveiling occurs we fly soon shalom